Hello, viewers. I greet you all in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Once again, I'm happy to be on this episode to share with you the wonderful word of the Lord. It is a blessing, and I believe that you and I are going to be blessed by this episode. And it will be so great to partake and share in the revelations of the word of the Lord. The word of God is our life and it is our source of growth. The Bible said, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of the Lord. So the more we engage in the word of God, the more we listen to it, the more we study it, the more we learn of it, the greater our faith becomes. You see, our faith grows the more we listen and hear the word of God. And again on this episode, I'm bringing to you God's wonderful word. Before we proceed, shall we have a word of prayer? Father Lord, I thank you and I give you praise this day. Indeed, you have made this day. Your word is coming to us. And as we are ready to listen, we open our spirits to you. We open our minds to you. That, Lord, you will cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened. That we receive grace to walk in your word and become doers of your word. All to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, I thank God for your life. I thank God also for my life. On this episode, I want to share with you God's word that I have titled, How to Pray Long Prayers. How to Pray Long Prayers. And I believe that you and I understand that we, are, we have been admonished by the word of God to pray for long. Okay? God wants us to pray all kinds of prayers. When you read the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, Bible says, pray all kinds of prayers. What do I mean by all kinds of prayers? We have prayers that are short. We have prayers that are long. We have prayers that are loud. We have prayers that are silent. We have prayers that others call it medium prayers. Amen. So we have all kinds of prayers and God is ready to listen to all kinds of prayers. All right. Yet on this episode, we are going to talk about the long prayers. All right. God wants us to pray long. You see, most of us are, I would say, used to short prayers. Example, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and so forth, and so forth, and so on. <laughs> Amen. Yes, that is a short prayer, and we are used to it. When we are going out from our houses, we pray, Lord, I commit myself into your hands. Take me out safely and bring me back safely. That is a short prayer, and that is good. You see, sometimes God wants us to pray short. I mean, you don't have to, to pray all the time in a long session. There is a season and a course for long prayers. That is why on this show, on this episode, we will be talking about that. And I believe it will be a greater blessing to you wherever you are. Okay? You can pick up your Bibles, set yourself ready as you join me in the course of the Word. Amen. Now, what do I mean by long prayer? Or when we say long prayers, what do we mean by that? Okay? When you look into the Bible and you read the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 40, Jesus made a remarkable statement to Peter. You see, Jesus told Peter that, Peter, could you not even wait in prayer for one hour? Just one hour? Peter, you couldn't even wait to pray and you are asleep all of you he was speaking to his disciples so from this verse I, I i am able to perceive or we are able to perceive that well a long prayer should be at least at least an hour all right 
So to Jesus, Jesus would, would see anything less than one hour as a short prayer. Because the situation at hand, he needed people to be with him, to tarry in prayer. And he, he, he used or he referred the situation or the, the length of the prayer. He said, at least an hour, Peter, you could not pray. You could not tarry with me. So long prayers, I would say in view of time, should be at least an hour. Okay? An hour. So we are going to learn how we can pray long prayers, how we can pray for long. Okay? But before we look at the how, I want us to look at the why God wants us to pray long prayers. The significance of long prayers, the importance of long prayers as a Christian. Okay? It is very vital. You must understand the, the, the importance of long prayers so that you begin to develop your prayer life right where you are from the short to the long. Okay? God expects your prayer life to cover all the forms and kinds of prayer. So if you are all used to the short prayers, it is about time you develop into the long prayers. There should be times and days that you, 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 you have to, to go one hour with the Lord. Okay? With the Lord. So we will be looking at the importance or the significance of long prayers. Then we attend to how we can develop that or cultivate that habit to the glory of God. Amen. And I pray that this day your prayer life will receive grace and you will grow in greater dimension by the power and the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now pick up your Bibles and join with me as we look deeper and go into the importance of long prayers. Okay. Why must we pray long? Why does the Bible admonish us to pray for long as Christians? Okay. One, the debt of some problems can only be solved by long prayers. What did I say? I said there are some problems that can only be solved by long prayers. You see, the debt of certain problems can only be solved by long prayers. Shall we look at a scripture in the Bible to confirm this? then practically we look into how we can uh we can we can live by this standard of the word in our in our various lives amen go with me to the book of first kings chapter 18 verse number 43 to 40, 44 okay and let's read something now listen to what the bible say the bible says and he said to his servant go up look toward the sea so he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Elijah said, Go back seven times. And at the seventh time, the servant said, A cloud as small as the man's hand is coming up from the sea. Hallelujah. And Elijah said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down so that the rain shower does not stop you. Amen. Now, what is this verse about? There was a situation where Elijah prayed to God that the heavens shut. There were, there were no rains on earth for three and a half years. Now, looking at this verse, a time came where Elijah had to now pray again for rains to come. You see, now listen, Elijah prayed seven times. He tarried, he waited in the presence of the Lord concerning this problem seven times. He prayed at first, he sent the servant to go and check. When the servant went, the servant said, Master, I see nothing. Elijah prayed again for the second time that rains will fall. But the servant went again to check, nothing was happening up until the seventh time when he sent him to go and check then he saw a, a hand okay a proof of 
and upcoming rains. Okay, the clouds gave a sign, but he only saw a response. He got an answer at the seventh time. So Elijah, in other words, we will say he tarried seven hours to pray for rains to come. He had to do what? He had to pray for seven hours. Okay? Every time he prayed, we, we assume it to be an hour. So for seventh time. So when you look at the situation, when Elijah had to pray for the rains to close or the heavens to shut, Elijah did not pray for seven times. Okay? He only commanded and spoke a word, and immediately the heavens shut. You see? But when he needed the heavens to release rains, a word, a short prayer couldn't solve the problem. He had to pray for long seven times <laughs> you see so as elijah only spoke a word at the beginning of the problem when he needed sorry when he needed to close the heavens from raining he only spoke a word that was a short prayer the heavens i command you not to rain again and immediately the heaven shut so there are certain problems in your life that will only need short prayers okay you only have to speak a word you only have to speak unto god shortly about that you don't have to go hours or tarry for long and you will see the results just like elijah but then again when elijah needed rains to come a short prayer couldn't solve the problem he prayed he went nothing happened he did it again nothing happened third time fourth time fifth time, sixth time, seventh time, then he got his answer. So certain problems in your life, the depth of it can only be solved by long prayers. You have to pray for long. You have to go more in the presence of God. If you want to receive your answers to certain problems in this life, then you must learn to cultivate the habit of praying for long. You must recognize the nature of the problem, the depth of the problem, in order to what, know the nature of prayer to render. Do you get the context? Yeah, so there are some problems that you don't have to go for longer hours. You don't have to go for, for, for an hour, okay? So you can just simply ask God for it and it, it is done. Or you can speak a word and it is done. By your faith, it is done. But yet again, there are certain problems in our practical lives that a word cannot solve such problems. What are some of the problems? There are major problems in life where a person needs to tarry long in God's presence in prayer to get a result, to get an answer. Okay? You cannot, let's take it as a person who is looking for a partner to marry. You cannot just ask God, Lord, I want to marry I want to marry. I need a partner. Give me a partner. Then God gives you a partner. Or a partner immediately just shows up and you, you, you go along with it. No. This is a major, a major problem in life. You see, a major circumstance, a major situation in life, which will require a, a number of hours in the presence of the Lord in order to get or receive the wisdom of God to choose a partner. Sometimes to choose a right partner in life, you need to tarry in God's presence in prayer. You need to be waiting upon the Lord in order to get the re divine wisdom to choose a right partner. Okay? There are other major problems in life. Let's say you need, you need to give birth. Alright? You need to give birth. Or you, 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 are looking, um, you are looking for a baby. You are, you are, you are sterile. You are impotent or you are barren as a woman. And you are waiting, you are asking God for a child. Like the situation of Sarah and Abraham. This kind of situation, barrenness, cannot be answered by short prayers. Lord, I need a baby, give me a baby. And immediately the baby comes. 
or your womb begins to, to, to flourish. No, God is able to do all things exceedingly abundantly, but yet we need to understand the revelation of the times and the depth of certain problems that we are in. When you are in the situation of barrenness, it calls for long prayers. You need to be tiring. You need to be waiting. You need to be praying for longer hours in the presence of the Lord concerning that problem. Okay? So, one, the reason why we have to pray long, that the Bible admonishes us to pray long, is because certain problems can only be solved by long prayers. Amen. And I need you to catch this revelation and understand this revelation and practically apply this in your life. All right. So you need to understand the, 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 the importance of long prayers and be stirred in your spirit to develop and cultivate that habit. And it will be a great blessing unto you. Amen. Shall we look to the second point? Why we must pray for long? Amen. All right. You see, long prayers help us to renew our strength. Amen. Long prayers help us to renew our strength in the Lord. Okay. Through waiting. Shall we read a scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Long prayers help us to renew our strength through waiting okay when you pray long when you pray for long hours when you pray one hour two hours three hours okay that grace of long prayer it builds you up it helps you to do or to renew your strength in the lord okay spiritually we get tired sometimes we get used up it is our life spiritually it's like a battery Okay, our life spiritually, it is like a battery. The, the more you use a battery, the more a phone uses a battery or its battery, you get to see that the battery gets used up and it runs down in power. It gets drained. It is the same thing with our spirit, okay, and our strength. Our strength gets drained the more we run on spiritual exercises, we run on spiritual things, okay? As we, we, we walk with God, we walk with God in the strength of our spirit. And whatever thing that we do, studying the word, going to church, doing good, listening to the word of God, moving here and there, evangelizing, all of these things are done through the strength in our spirit. And as we are engaging in all of these spiritual exercises, our strength begins to go down. Sometimes as we live life, the weight of life, okay, upon ourselves also gets to drain, okay, our spiritual strength. The worries of life, the cares of life, the responsibilities we all have to attend to, they get to drain our strength. So there comes a time where you need to Go before the Lord to renew your strength. Just as a phone gets recharged, you need to recharge okay, your spirit. And to renew your strength, to get back your strength and vitality, it cannot come through short prayers. You cannot feel exhausted spiritually. You cannot feel exhausted in your spirit and ask God, Lord, I need strength, give me strength, and immediately you feel strength. It doesn't work that way. Short prayers doesn't bring strength. Short prayer cannot revive you. Okay? So now that takes us to, the, to one of the significance of praying for long. Long prayers renew our strength. Okay? The more we are lingering in the presence of God, the more we are tiring in the presence of God, the more we are waiting in prayer, the more we are praying for long in the, in the presence of God, our strength begins to refill. Okay? So as you go through life, when you are feeling tired of life, when you are feeling exhausted emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all you need to do is to get into the presence of the Lord and tarry there for long. 
be there for long. Sometimes some of my friends tell me, um, Brother Emmanuel, I'm tired of life. I get so drained. I'm tired. I feel exhausted. And I, I get to see that, you see, they just complain and whine here and there. And I look to them and I can see that they are just there watching TV, still going about trying to, 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 to get strength through certain canal activities, which doesn't work. So what I tell them is that, brother, sister, you need to go before the Lord. You need to lock yourself up in a quiet place and tarry there. Your strength can only come to you through waiting, through tarrying, through the process of long prayers, long communication with God, spending a longer time with God. That is when you can receive much strength. And when your spirit is strengthened, it affects your soul. Your soul also begins to receive strength. It gets revitalized. That is where your emotions, your mental capacities, your willpower begins to be energized again. And it then affects your body. Okay? Sometimes you can be moody, you can be lousy, you can be lazy. All of these things, when, the, when you see, when, the, when, when, you're, when you become weak, okay? When you become weak spiritually, it affects, it dawns on your body. All right? So when you are feeling tired, drained in life, get into the closet and pray. Have time with the Lord. Jesus said, at least an hour. If you want to exercise long prayers, Jesus says, at least an hour, be with the Lord. And it will be a great blessing unto you. Shall we read this scripture? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And let's listen to what prophet Isaiah is saying here. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength and renew their power listen isaiah is saying that those who, 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 who do what who wait on the lord who wait on the lord who wait for the lord and the word waiting means you are staying longer than usual okay so god is telling us that until you sometimes have to stay longer in his presence you cannot receive certain strength you cannot be revitalized again do you get that and the, the, you see when you become strong there comes joy in you joy and strength you see has a relationship that is why nehemiah 8 10 says that the joy of the lord is our strength you see the moment you become strengthened you you become happy you see, when you are depressed, it, it takes away your happiness, takes away your smiles, it takes away your activeness. You become dull. Life feels so, so um, purposeless to you. Okay? Meaning your strength has been weakened. And the life of joy and happiness in the Lord will come to you when you learn to wait. Okay? So Isaiah says that they will gain new strength and renew their power <laughs> amen so long prayers are important to god and very much important also to you they will lift up their wings and rise up close to god like eagles rising toward the sun they will run and not become weary they will walk and not grow tired amen so when you receive strength from the Lord through long prayers, Bible says that you will not be tired. So all those who feel tired in life, who feel drained in life, who feel so exhausted, sometimes you can be exhausted in life that it is not just a physical exhaustion, but rather emotionally you are tired, mentally you are tired, spiritually you are drained, and physically it has affected your body that you feel that you are weak. God is telling you that when you are in such a situation, you see, you must go before him. Linger, be there, spend time, quality time with him. You see, not less than one hour, at least an hour. And God promises to give you new strength. 
It is not that he is he's about to give you, he's now about to give you strength. The strength of God is already in you as a child of God. And the strength of God is in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. But that strength needs to be renewed each and every day, now and then. Just as you charge your phone each and every now and then, as you use your phone. Don't wait to be drained completely, else it takes a longer time for the strength of God to come to you. Sometimes it can take more than hours. It can take more than days. It can take a week. It can take three days. Sometimes when I'm, I feel drained, I, have, I can tarry in God's presence for about three or four days. Then I get to feel my spirit being renewed again. Sometimes too, it can take hours. All right? So when you are feeling that, you need to tarry longer. Okay? Don't wait to, to, to feel so drained and exhausted that spiritually you are down before you, you do what? You come before God. That will require a longer time to recover. Yet God will give you the strength. It is like your phone. When you wait for the phone to go up, die completely, you get to realize that when you are charging, it takes a bit of time before the power shows up again. That is the same thing with our spirits. Amen. So long prayers will help us. Amen. Shall we look again to the next point? The next point says, you can only... You see, you can only receive and benefit much from God and be affected by his glory as much and long as you dwell with him. Okay? As much as you are in his presence, that is how much you get affected. You see, so meaning the glory of God that is in his presence, we are affected by how long we wait or we tarry or we spend time with God. So if you spend time with God five minutes for about five minutes, you only get five minutes effect of his glory. If you spend time in God's presence for 40 minutes or 30 minutes, you get 30 minutes effect of his glory in your life. So when you spend longer hours, there is a power in the presence of God, which is his glory. The glory of God transforms. It is what transforms us into Christ. When we say someone is growing spiritually, the Holy Spirit does the transformation, and that transformation is backed by the glory of God. The glory of God does or brings about the transformation. And your prayers can transform you the longer you are in the presence. Why? Because the glory that transforms you, it is in the presence of God. And as you are waiting and lingering, the glory of God begins to rub on you. As it rubs on you, you take a reflection of God. That is why sometimes when you pray for long and you come out of prayer or you come out of the prayer room, you feel different. You sense differently you're, you're in your system. You, you, you feel so different. You feel a sort of like a new person. You see your identity as a child of God, a new person, it comes alive. But you cannot get to have this reality when you are only praying five minutes in the presence of God. Okay, so if you want to be affected much by the glory of God in prayer, be transformed into a new person. All right, even engage or receive angelic visitation, then you must be in God's presence for long, talking to him in prayer, being silent with him in prayer, being in prayer with him for one hour and over. Look to Moses. Bible said when Moses went to the mountains to tarry there for 40 days and 40 nights, when Moses came back from the mountains, Bible said that his face was, his face was glowing, shining like that of an angel, that the people of Israel could not behold the face of Moses. Moses himself couldn't realize the transformation on him. His face was reflecting the glory of God. And that glory of God came about because he, he had been there for 40 days. We are not even talking about hours here with Moses. The brother was on the desert, was on the mountain for 40 days 
only to find himself shining like an angel. And that can happen to you. It can happen to you. The glory of God is in his presence. As you, you stay longer, you pray longer, it wraps on you. It is what brings transformation. Amen. So you must take into consideration that habit of praying for long. Develop yourself. Allow the Spirit of God to develop you, to, to, to grow in, in, in the Lord by praying for long. Amen. So many a times, your life, certain attitudes, you have certain behaviors and characters and attitudes that you want to, 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 to change, to stop. All right. You are seeking diligently for transformation in your life as a Christian. You want to live your life as that of Christ. You want to portray your life as a, as a child of God. Okay. There are certain people that you want God to transform their lives as you intercede for them. You cannot intercede for people and expect transformation under five minutes prayers. Transformation from the Bible and from the context of Moses in the book of Exodus tells us that it comes when you tarry longer in the presence of God. When you are in God's presence for long, it brings about transformation. Hallelujah. So the importance of praying for long is what will bring transformation of character, transformation of personalities, transformation of of, of, of certain bad attitudes that you need to, to be delivered from. Why? Because the glory and the power of God, which reside in the presence, it wraps on you, and as it wraps on you, it changes you. And that comes about long prayers. Amen. Amen. I believe you are receiving the revelation of the word of God into your spirit, and you are grabbing and soaking in, in, in the wisdom of God. When you begin to learn to walk in this, you will see changes in your Christian life. You will experience God. God will be so real to you. Okay, prayer has power. Everything is by prayer, and there is nothing you can do as a Christian without prayer. Okay, so you must understand the power of prayer when we say prayer transforms it does so through long prayers this is the cause of the transformation of prayer that comes about amen david said something in something in the book of um, psalms chapter 42 verse 6 down to 8 david said something that deep calls to deep when you go deeper with god when you tarry longer in god's presence then God is able to release his fullness to you. You cannot get to enjoy God's fullness under five minutes, under ten minutes. You cannot. So deep calls to deep. When you give your deeper side, when you pour out, when you stay long, God is able to also pour out his heart to you. God is able to release the cause of his what innermost desires innermost wishes innermost grace unto you you see so you cannot give god your shallow part and expect to receive the deeper things of god it doesn't work you see deep cause to deep so meaning there is a direct proportion a relationship here so you cannot be shallow in exchange for a deeper thing you cannot tarry for in god's presence or you cannot pray for 10 minutes and expect to walk in the power of God and expect to walk in total transformation and expect to receive power to overcome the troubles of the day. No, that comes to you through long prayers. Amen. Shall we look to the next point? Why we need to pray? Then we will get into how we can cultivate the habit of praying for long. Amen. The next point says, Every major event of your life requires long prayers. And I believe it. And it's true. Every major event of your life requires what? Long prayers. Why must we pray for long? Because there are certain major events in your life for them to be success, successful, for them to, 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 be, to, be, to, be, um, to prosper, you can only achieve them 
through long prayers. I said major events in your life. Amen. So what are some of the major events in our lives, especially when you are about to marry? You need, you need to go before the Lord for a longer time. You see, you need to commit your marriage into God's hand. Okay, because marriage is a long journey. When you are you when you're looking for a partner, you need to be in God's presence for long. You need to enter into a long prayer before you begin that project, before you begin that event. Jesus went into an all-night prayer before he came out to call out his 12 disciples. Jesus didn't wake up in the in, in, in the course of the day to just say, All right, John, come to me. Andrew, come. He had before he did the event of choosing his disciples, Bible said that he had been with the Father throughout the night praying. And the next day was when he came out to choose. Why? Because the, the, the 12 disciples that he would choose, they would be the foundation of the church. Amen. That he is going to use to build. Do you get the whole context? So any major event in your life requires long prayers. Look to your personal life. What are some of the major events you see in your life that, that need prayer? Don't apply short prayers. Don't apply silent prayers when certain events in your life are major. You need to pray for long. You need to be in God's presence for a longer time. Amen. So do not miss this point, else it will crumble, else there wouldn't be success on that event. Jesus would have failed miserably. Even look at how, what happened. Even after praying all the all-night prayers, there was still one who was a betrayer, a thief. Even the disciples at the end, they all had to desert Jesus, leave him alone, le left they, they all left him. Yet, those prayers Jesus prayed many years before choosing them were still working. That everything worked out for his good. Amen. So, when you pray for long in your, towards any major event in your life, before undertaking it, God will make it work out for your good. Why? Because of those prayers. So, attach long prayers to major events in your life and it will be a great blessing then the next point we have short prayers only become powerful as much as your long prayers you see your short prayers become much powerful just as your long prayers so what is this context trying to say when you pray short for your short prayers to have power the power of your short prayers it's derived from your habit of praying for long. I believe you're getting the point. All right. So when you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus did a lot of short prayers when he was in public. Jesus wasn't conducting three hours prayer sessions just to cast out a demon, just to, to solve people's problems. Jesus only had to pray short. Look at the scenario between Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. When Lazarus died, Jesus lifted his hand in the book of John. He thanked the Father, and he called out Lazarus from the dead, and he rose. You see, what gave Jesus power, or what made his short prayers to be powerful? Because he was a man of long prayers. Amen. Jesus was a man of long prayers. So if your short prayer will receive power, it is derived from your habit and your attitude of long prayers. So a person who tarries and prays for long, when they come out to command and to speak in short prayers, there is power. Power begins to move. Do you get the context? So your short prayers receives, receive power from your habit of praying for long so praying for long must become a desire it must become your attitude it must be valued learn to pray long prayers for your own good okay there are times in my life where i need to i need to only speak a word to a sick person and they they recover Okay, there are times I, I need to only just lay hand and touch 
and they are healed all right i don't have to conduct a lot of hours to commanding sicknesses to, to to depart bible said you lay your hands on them and they will recover they will heal the power of that you see it will come from your 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 private times with the lord your private longer sessions with god jesus would pray all through the night only to come out in public and command and demons will, will flee situations will change okay you can try to get in and practice this and you will fail miserably why because there is a secret behind the power behind the short prayers of jesus it is coming from his closet how long he he tarries in the closet with god he prays for long so begin to develop your prayer life from an from 30 minutes to one hour for, from an hour to two hours three hours begin to develop pleasure and delight dwelling before the presence of god get some quiet place or quiet um, uh, um corner and be there with god and enjoy god for long okay and it will be a blessing the last point before we step into how we can pray okay the last point on the very importance of praying for long we have prayers are stored and are saved your prayers are stored and are what saved there is a bowl in heaven that saves all that that stores your prayers and you see there when when that bowl becomes full okay it is brought before the lord to be answered so the reason why some of your prayers are not answered yet is because your prayer bowl in heaven is in full. You need to keep filling them up. And you cannot be filling your bowl up, your prayer bowl up, when you are always praying five minutes, when you, when you could be praying for an hour. So let's take it this way. If a person prays for an hour and a person prays for five minutes, do you think whose bowl do you think will, will, will get full quicker? Would it, wouldn't that be the one who prays an hour? Imagine the one praying for three hours. So the longer you pray, the quicker your bowl gets full. You see, and when your bowl is full, your prayer bowl is full in the book of um, Revelation chapter 5 verse 8, which we will shortly read. When your prayer bowl is full, it begins to produce a fragrance. You see, an incense, a sweet aroma, a sweet smell, okay? And that smell is what, what stirs God or puts God in the situation to answer you, to respond to you, okay? So let's look into the Bible and read a verse on this for confirmation. Open with me to the book of Revelation chapter 5, verse number 8. Revelation chapter 5, verse number 8, okay? Listen to what the word of God says. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, that is Jesus. Each one holding a harp and golden balls full of fragrant incense, which are the prayers of the saints, God's people. Amen. Do you get that? So God is saying that, you see, the 24 elders were each having bowls of prayers in their hand. And those bowls were the prayers of the saints. And they were full. You see, check. When they were full, they were brought before the Lord. So, since your prayers are stored and they are saved in heaven, why don't you get to pray more and for longer in order to get your bowls full? For your prayers to be answered i want you to grab the revelation very clearly and it will be a blessing so engage in a situation where your prayer bowl gets to be full maybe you may have been praying to god concerning a certain problem and god seems to still be waiting on you or you may still be waiting on god whichever way it is simply because there is a spiritual revelation in this verse that is telling us that perhaps your bowl in heaven has not yet been full, meaning your prayers concerning that particular matter isn't enough. 
it is not moving God. It is not. It has not got into the the level where the bowl has become full to produce fragrance. Amen. Until there is a, a, a fragrance that smells good, God cannot attend to your prayers. So you must start cultivating the habit of praying for long in order to do what? To have your prayers answered. Now this takes us to the, the next session where we have to, where, where we, we, we talk about how we can, we can pray long prayers. Okay, one, if you want to pray long prayers, what must you do? Learn to create time, make a time, make time. Create time. Amen. If you want to pray long prayers, you must create time. Purposefully create time for prayers. Okay? You see, why? Because long prayers demands and requires time. Long prayer requires time. When you want to pray long, you will have to have you 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 will need time on your hand. You must have time on, on your hand. You cannot rush through long prayers. That is why you need to make up time. If you want to pray for long, look through the course of the week. Okay? The week, there are some of the days when, when, you, when you are less busy. Okay? Make time. I, I would say willingly and determinedly make time for God. That I am waiting on God. I am going into prayer, whether Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, at this time, up until this time, from 12 to 3. I just want to be in God's presence. I just want to have time with Him. I just want to enjoy the fellowship of my Father. Okay? You must make time. Time will never come on your hand automatically. Why? Because the system of the world has been scheduled in a very in a very um, destructive way that takes God out of your schedules. Why? Because Satan fights your prayer life a lot. Satan fights your prayer life. He will go every mile to steal your time of prayer. That is why you must make time yourself. If you are looking or waiting to be less busy in order to pray for long or to be with God or to spend good time with God, it may never happen. Because after one activity comes another. After one responsibility comes another. When you wake up in the course of the day, when you wake up from your bed in the morning, you get dressed up for work and you come back again in the night, in the night, and in the course of the night, if you are married, you have responsibilities of of of, of a wife or or, or um of of a, of of a husband. If you have children, children get in with their with their distractions, okay. And if you are a single person, there also comes other duties that you need to do uh, uh, do or finish up in the course of the day after work, which when you get to your bed, you get to feel that the body is tired. Your body is tired. You cannot pray. You cannot do any, any other thing. You see, before you realize, bam, you are down, sleeping. Then the day starts again and it continues. So you must willingly make time, look to your day, your schedules, and, and put God there. Though God is in the course of your mind, God must be in your mind the whole The Bible says we should pray without ceasing. That means God must be with you as you are praying short prayers. Make time for long prayers. Willingly make time for long prayers. And it will be a great blessing to you. Okay? Jesus said an hour. Set an hour or more. As you are growing, you see, it's a habit. So you may struggle if it is not something you are used to. But do not stop it. Even if it is 30 minutes, that is good. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Before you realize, it becomes a habit. You see, a habit is a repeated action. When you keep repeating certain actions, you get to realize that it becomes a part of you. Okay? Yeah. So, do not quit. Do not give up. Keep on. And you will start enjoying. There will be a sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That will keep you going even for more longer time for longer times and for 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 more sessions with god and it will bless you okay so there's the second point the next point i want us 
to 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 also look at the scripture um ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 okay ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 ephesians 5 18 let's read what paul is talking about here paul says that do not get drunk with wine for that is wickedness corruption and stupidity but be filled with the holy spirit and constantly be guided by him so the second the second point or key to how you can pray in the holy spirit i would say learn to create a spiritual atmosphere amen learn to create a spiritual atmosphere your atmosphere matters a lot why because you see atmosphere influences your your time with god there is power behind any atmosphere you put yourself in okay your atmosphere influences your life wherever you are the atmosphere and environment at the moment will have implications upon you so if you want to pray for long you need to do what you need to create a spiritual atmosphere that will influence you to 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 pray for long okay if you don't get to do what to to, to create a right atmosphere you get to re realize that even after five minutes your mind is tired you cannot go on again it begins to wander here there you feel lazy you feel tired to continue you are done and you, you you feel uninterested to continue why because the atmosphere itself is dry it does not encourage it, it encourages it does not stir okay so you need to do what create a spiritual atmosphere and it will be a great blessing for you okay so your atmosphere matter how can you create a spiritual atmosphere put in a nice worship song okay surround yourself with christian books surround yourself with scriptures the bible you see you must have an atmosphere that that has god that speaks about god where all you look around what you see has a, a message of god that is communicating god to you all right you cannot be in an atmosphere where there is a worldly song singing where children are making noise where the tv set is on where the radio is playing and come on you want to pray let's be serious okay you must be serious so you cannot pray for long when the environment doesn't suit you rightly so the reason why you are not praying for long is because you are in a poor environment and it does not inspire spiritual um, um spiritual connection with god it does not inspire spirituality you see so when you are at home and you realize the atmosphere is dry try to create you can create an atmosphere all right try to create it when you come to my house when you come to my 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 my, my place I'm surrounded by things that has to do that have to do with God. Okay, everything about me has to do with God. You will find worship song, you will find Christian books, you will find the Bible, teaching tapes, be listening to teaching tapes all the time. Sometimes I can be praying and there will be teaching tapes behind at the background because it it inspires, it 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 energizes me to go more. Sometimes I pray with worship songs. It is more easy sometimes when the environment is dry and quiet you get to see that you you become tired so i encourage you to put at the background some powerful worship songs that will stir you on onto prayer because when you you see when you get to be filled much all right much with worship what comes out is prayer you begin to talk to god okay so there is power in listening to powerful worship song which can stir you on to pray for long okay and what else again when you read the scripture we read paul said that constantly be guided by the holy spirit be filled with the holy spirit so you must have an atmosphere always around you whether at your workplace whether at school wherever you are at home create an environment do not condone do not contain or entertain a worldly atmosphere a secular atmosphere many children of god are not walking with the holy spirit every day of their lives why because the environment they they always find themselves in 
either it is not demonic it is what secular worldly secular things may not may not look sinful but it is what kills your spiritual vibe so do yourself to cut to cut down your exposure to secularity all right watching tv is not good but watching tv doesn't inspire any spiritual thing in you it doesn't inspire anything about god so sometimes you need to put these things away do you get what i'm saying uh -huh. so when you get so much into secular things you kill you drain you drain your spiritual flow your spiritual connection your spiritual sensitivity i don't wanna when i'm bored I would rather want to be bored being in the presence of God, having things that talk that talk uh, that talks about God, than rather to go watch TV, than rather to go be in the midst of friends and be talking and be making noise here and there. Why? Because such things doesn't inspire any spiritual thing or me. It's rather though they don't they don't look sinful, but they rather do not also make me. They don't make me spiritual. And for that matter, it will affect my, my flow with God and His Spirit. Because I have been admonished by God each day to walk in the Spirit. To be filled by His Spirit. And I can do that when the environment I always find myself in, the environment I always encourage, is secular. Has got nothing to do with God. It, when the environment isn't spiritual. So you cannot pray for long when the environment you are in isn't spiritual. Amen. Yeah, so that is one of the points, okay? That, that's the second point, you see? And the next one, you see, you must remove any distraction from you. If you want to pray for long, you must remove distractions from you. The reason why you cannot pray for long, the reason why when you pray five minutes and you are tired is because the, you, you are distracted. You are simply distracted. All right, so do your best to get in tune with God. Okay, remove every distraction, any distraction. Sometimes your phone can be a distraction. If you want to pray for long and be with the Lord and spend good time with God, sometimes you must put your phone on silence or better you must put it away and just be with God. Close your mind away from your problems, from your children, from your wife, from your husband, from your friends, from your work. It is with God. Let it be with God. And sometimes, you see, the mind is so out of line sometimes. It will, it will try to wander. Bring it back. You have control. Bring it back. It is not wrong. To have your mind wander. Sometimes you can still be in the presence of God and your mind is thinking about work. It is okay. I go through that too. Okay? You, it's surprising how you be in God's presence and your mind is on another thing. It's cool. But you don't have to entertain your mind with that thing. Bring it back. Train the channel quickly and get yourself in tune again in the presence of God and get it all moving. Okay? So if you want to pray for long, Jesus said that remove all these distractions. Shut the door. Be alone with your Father. Okay, so distractions will kill the, the, the flow, the ability to pray for long. So if you want to know how to pray for long, learn to remove distractions from the path and enjoy quality time with the Lord. With a created atmosphere that is spiritual, with distractions removed, with time made and set and created. Oh, trust me, you are ready to enjoy God. You see, initially it may start out dry, but don't worry, still linger, be there. That is why it requires time, be there. You get to see that you, you get to find God sometimes after an hour, sometimes after two hours. For the first 30 minutes, you will feel so dry, you will feel, oh, it's it, it work, it's load. Yeah, that's your flesh. You, are, you need to break the, your flesh. Your flesh needs to be deactivated before your spirit gets in tune with God. So sometimes that is why God will want you to be waiting, waiting and waiting, okay? Waiting. And in the course of it, he has promised to, to appear, to show up. And it will be a great blessing. Amen. The last point on this, then we bring the sermon and teachings to an end. 
the last point is that you must make a list of what to pray for in god's presence okay then after you can rely on the holy spirit to lead you to ask for other things that he brings to your mind or to your spirit okay so sometimes if you want to pray for long you you have to make a list of things that you want to pray for okay yeah you can it is not wrong to make a list i mean we are humans and sometimes god understands our our our, our, our limited versions he knows we are limited okay so get some some list get a list of things you want to talk to god about okay so the reason is sometimes when you don't have a list that is where when you are in god's presence and you pray for you pray for forgiveness you pray about my family my this and that you get to realize that you are out of words you are out of request but meanwhile if you had taken time to sit down to make a list you you would have realized that you needed to pray for a lot of things Pray for the sake, pray for your enemies, pray for other things, pray for this and that and that. And they would have come to you if you had taken time to make a list. So if you want to go before the Lord and spend good time with him, try to make a list. Okay? A number of lists. Then after the list, when you are done with your list, when they are exhausted out, then learn to depend. Sometimes be quiet, be silent in the presence of the Lord. Okay? Silence is also a form of prayer. You've been in the course of praying for long. Sometimes you need to be quiet. Don't think not speaking or saying anything, it, 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 it's not prayer. It's still a form of prayer. Because if it is even in those silent situations where God ministers to you. Okay, so those times, wait and be quiet before the Lord and await His Holy Spirit. He may place before you a certain desire to pray about. He may cause you to intercede for someone. He may bring someone's needs and desires upon your heart for you to pray, okay? So before you realize, you get to realize that one hour has gone already, two hours already gone, and you, you, may, have been, you may have been lingering in God's presence for an hour, for several hours, who knows? So when we learn to work with, with all of these things, it will be a great blessing to us. Okay? So these few points, I believe when you learn by the power and the grace of God, you will, you will, your prayer life will change. And you will start to walk in the power of the word of God. And it will be a great blessing. It is my prayer that your prayer life changes from short prayers to long prayers. Okay? Bible says that ask, seek, and knock. You can get to the knocking stage more of the times when you get to the, the to, to when you get to exercise long prayers. Okay, we thank God for the end of the session, and I pray that you be a blessing wherever you are. If you walk with the word of the Lord, it will be a great blessing to you. It will bring transformation. May your prayer prayer life take on a different dimension all to the glory of the lord god bless you till then take care be good i'll see you once again bye bye